Oh my gosh. What up? What up? What up? Hello, everybody. We are here with the one, the only Ben Brode. Very, very exciting. Ben, how are you doing today? How, how are things doing, man? Fantastic. I am so excited to be back. We've been trying to make this happen for a while. I had so much fun last time. Uh, I'm ready to play some, some Marvel Snap. I'm ready to play some Marvel Snap too, man. We got some spicy decks today. Uh, we're gonna take some time. Ooh, I think I'm just. I just think I just kicked you. Oh, there you are. There you are. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna play some spicy decks. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about uh, this season's cards, which I know uh, you, you're very very excited for. Uh, so uh, lots of good things. Lots of good things going here. Um, so tell me. Uh, you, you know, I, I think uh, this was. Uh, one of the first questions that I wanted to talk about, but, but a, a lot of people in Second Dinner have been on break recently, which I think is really, oh, yeah. really cool. Uh, and I know that you said that you had you done some vacationing as well. Um, and I just wanted to hear a little bit like about your thoughts about that. Is that something that you brought to the, the team at Second Dinner, wanted to do this annual summer break? And, and why do you think that it's important to make sure that kind of like your team takes breaks, is refreshed, and, and kind of just uh, all gets together and says, hey, we're going to kind of put down the business side of things for, for a little bit. Uh, let's see. I do think, I mean, it's, it's really important to be, like Marvel Snap is not like a thing where we like launch it. We're like, all right, we're done. You know, mm -hmm. like, this is the thing we'll be working on for sure like, a really long time. So if, if we can't figure out how to do that in a sustainable, you know, way where people like will get fulfillment out of, you know, like working on this thing for a really long time, then it's not gonna be good, right? We're gonna like, you know, lose people, get burned out. It's like, you know, we need to retain the best folks. We have an incredible team. We wanna make sure people love working on Marvel Snap. And, you know, part of that is, uh, is this kind of stuff, uh, you know, making sure that people get time off. I gotta tell you, like, you know, we could just give people an extra week of vacation time they could use on their own. But when we do this kind of thing where the whole studio takes it off at the same time, and obviously not every, single person could be up every single day, right? If something comes up and there's live issues or whatever, we gotta, we gotta be on, we gotta be on stuff. But like, you know, for the most part, when everyone takes the same week off together, like it is the most relaxing week because nobody's, you know, when, when you take a week off and everybody else is working, you're getting messages, you know, you're missing stuff. You're like, oh, I could have been, I should have been in that meeting or they made a decision without me. And it's mm -hmm. just like, but when nobody's doing that stuff, like it's, uh, it's much more relaxing. It's really refreshing. So it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's nice. I don't, I don't know. Like this is our first time doing this as a company. Actually, we've never done a oh, uh, okay. summer shutdown. We, we do, we do a winter shutdown, um, like between Christmas and New Year's and stuff. But like, mm -hmm. uh, this is the first time we did this thing. So I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a good thing we're gonna do every year or if we, if we'll just give people a week of vacation or something instead. But uh, I liked it. I thought it was fun. I, you know, I, I, I'd be in favor of doing it again next year. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really happy that uh, that that you guys do. I think that um, you know there can be a lot of things like crunch and stuff just in the the game development space, and and there's a lot of burnout that you see. And um, you, you know, I do think that uh, I, I do think it's just it's just really really important to you, you know make sure that people are, are uh, given permission, I guess, to like respect themselves and, and respect their own space because you can just get so in that work mode where you just go, 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 and there's no breaks. And even when you're taking a break, yeah. you're thinking about work the entire time. Uh, so like, I don't know, whenever I, I, I try to take like one big break a year where like go on a cruise ship or something, and I could just turn, oh, my, phone nice. just turn my phone off and just be like, okay, I'm, I'm not touching the internet for, for a few yep. days. And uh, I always think that that's just, just kind of uh, one of the best you know, things that you can do. It's, it's really interesting. We're a fully remote studio. And mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of our interactions are through Slack or Discord or, you know, other online tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's, it, we're also across multiple time zones. Right. So uh, trying to figure out ways in which like people can be a like, able to do their job, but also we're not like waking people up in the middle of the night or making people feel like they should be, you know, like they, they, they're done with work for the day. They're going to have dinner with their family or whatever and don't feel like they need to be on Slack answering messages or whatever. That kind of stuff is actually quite challenging. So we, we did a thing where um, we've like defined some core hours. And then if people send messages to big channels where lots of like, we have a, a place where anybody could send feedback about Marvel Snap, and it's like constant. Like the whole studio is constantly like, "Hey, this is I didn't like this, or this is awesome, or you know, whatever." It's like always feedback. And uh, we had to turn on a thing where if you send a message to that, like on the weekend or 
um, uh, like, you know, after a certain time at night, uh, Mrs. Minutes automatically replies to you and like, hey, uh, so I sent this message. Did you mean to schedule send that message actually for a later time? And I think it actually helps a little bit. Even if people are sending messages to that channel, it's like, uh, it's, it's helping everybody else know they don't need to reply to those messages right now. You know, you could just kind of ignore that. Obviously it wasn't, it's not, you know, you're not, we're not, no one's trying to activate anybody on the weekend to do work, mm -hmm. right? Like you should, we should be enjoying our weekends and then, uh, you know, dealing with stuff when, uh, Monday rolls around. Yeah, I think I think it's good for people. I mean, it's it's uh, just just such a such a work culture thing, you, you know, and, and it's um, uh, it's hard because, you know, you feel like it's incentivized to get ahead. You have to be work, work, work all the time. But I feel like you do see that, like in the, the long term, when you do like just allow yourself to have that break and that time and that space to be uh, away from work, uh, you, you're going to feel a lot better. So so that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. So, you know, 100 percent. you don't want to you don't overdo it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was super, super happy to hear that. It's just, uh, you, you know, I, I feel like uh, Second Dinner, um, you, you know, is at its core just like a very, very kind of small, lean uh, kind of, I, I don't know, I, I guess I, I would maybe say like scrappy kind of company in like, yeah. a, in like a good yeah. way where, you, you know, things things can move really quickly and, and it's a, a little bit different than the kind of like corporate uh, you know, just corp corporate kind of feel that, that some of these other uh, businesses give off. So uh, super, super cool, super cool to see anything like that. Um, you know, if you, it's just true. This is a true fact. Yeah. If you go to, if you go to small indie company.com, it redirects to second dinner. Oh com, my I, God. I, <laughs> I, I use that meme all the time because it's like, it's like small indie company, but like actually this time, like, I, like yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's, that's so good, man. I love <laughs> we that. Bought that. We bought that domain. <laughs> we started second dinner. We're like, it's, it turned out small indie company.com is uh, available. And we, we snapped it up. <laughs> gotta jump on it. Gotta jump on it. Well, uh, so, <laughs> So I wanted to start by talking about just like some of, some of the cards this season, man. I, th I think that the season uh, is really exciting. Uh, I think that there's a, a lot of like cool, interesting things uh, that are happening this season. Uh, and I, I would just love to kind of hear your thoughts on on each of the the, the new cards that we're going to get. You know, the three that are already out, uh, as well as the uh, ones that that aren't there yet uh, and, that, and that are coming very very soon. So the first one was the Phoenix Force, which uh, was the season pass card this month. Uh, I really, really have enjoyed Phoenix Force. I feel like it's a, a very interesting uh, combo potential card. Uh, you know, it's kind of got the the move elements, the destroy elements, kind of all crunched together uh, in a single card, which is, uh, you, you know, like pretty rare uh, for from yep, yep. Uh, for most of the time to be able to to really like kind of combine cards like this. Uh, tell me a little bit about the thought process of Phoenix Force and, and featuring it uh, for the, uh, the the season pass card this this month. Well, I, I'll say it's it's uh, like the, the the team, the card design team has an enormous amount of restraint because waiting this long to get uh, to tell this story and get Jean Grey and Phoenix Force out there, uh, like these are some of the most iconic Marvel characters ever, mm -hmm. right? Jean Grey yeah. is like way way up there. This is one of the top five Marvel stories. Um, so anyway, it's really exciting to be able to. Uh, you know, visit these locales and these characters and, and show them off. I, I love Phoenix Force. I, uh, I, I didn't, I had nothing to do with this card design. Okay. Uh, I had tried multiple times to design Phoenix Force cards. Um, because like, you know, uh, it's, this is very interesting. Actually, Jean Grey is both incredibly iconic as a character. Mm -hmm. And the first thing a lot of people think of when they think of Jean Grey is the Phoenix. Yeah. Right. Like I, that was one that's it's like her most iconic like story arc, right? Especially because it was one of the, the first ones that uh for when the X-Men became movies, you know, the the very first kind of like arc that they they went down was was Jean Cray becoming the the, the Phoenix. Yeah. So, right. So, yeah, because, so that because definitely it, made it very popular, yeah. In every in every form of media, like the cartoons, the movies, the comics, the Dark Phoenix saga is just like it's like what you do with Jean Grey. But like she's not the Phoenix most of the time. In most mm -hmm. of the comics about Jean Grey, she's Jean Grey, right? She's this incredibly talented telepath. She's part of the Cyclops Wolverine Jean Grey love triangle, right? Like, like there's a lot of other iconic stuff about her that's really cool. That's like that's like about her, you know? Mm -hmm. So like when we were trying to design Jean Grey, like a lot of people wanted to see a, a Phoenix design, right? Like maybe when she's destroyed, you replace her with the Phoenix or something. We ended up doing Bucky Barnes Winter Soldier in that style. Uh, sure. So we didn't want to like do that again for Jean Grey. And so um, 
uh, I was like, okay, what if we just make the Phoenix Force its own card? And then Jean Grey can do Jean Grey stuff, mm-hmm. and Phoenix Force can represent the Dark Phoenix fantasy. And uh, uh, so we tried a bunch of Jean Grey designs. I love I love the design we shared that. I think it's super fun. But the uh, uh, the Phoenix design uh, was like really weird. The original Phoenix design was not at all this cool. It was much more limited. It was like Can you tell uh, us a little about it. Or, or, uh, it was like res- it was more like Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. But if it resurrected Jean Grey, then it like it got even more powerful or something. It was like got a bunch of power or it did some other some other kicker or something. So it was like it had it actually said Jean Grey in the text box. It was like resurrected destroyed card. If it's Jean Grey, mm-hmm. then plus ten power or something. It was like kind of you know it's kind of cute because it like really rep- represents the fantasy of the Phoenix Saga. But this Very was cute. like. But it's not a very usual card. You have to like usable card. You have to build like a destroy Jean Grey tech or mm-hmm. something. Like, yeah. So you don't really have much agency over, it's, over what you It's do really it. weird. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, not that fun of a deck. So anyway, I love this design. I think it's super interesting. Uh like like resurrecting, it's, it's still got that kind of ghost rider feel, right? You're like resurrecting a dead card. But merging with it uh is so much more interesting, right? Like uh there's so much more that that unlocks as far as combos with their cards. And then I, the the ability to move. I mean, this is like a thing we um, uh, did with Jeff, the baby land shark, recently, where we just like you know he does. The, the cool thing about Jeff is that nothing can stop you from playing. I and mean, they were like, eh, screw screw, you can move him too. Uh, mm-hmm. And like, uh, kind of like what's going on here with Phoenix, oh, yeah, you can move him. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's just like gives so much flexibility, right? Like so many times there's a uh, and, and like you know just how the, the locations break break out right often there's a location where like you're punished for playing cards there like death's domain or lechuguia or you know any one of these things and you're like well you know you get you get a jeff or a phoenix force and you're like eh, you know, i don't mind so much you know it's uh uh it just wins a, a lot of games out of nowhere yeah yeah it's it's just so cool i mean being able to i mean there's the obvious you, you know connections or, or ways that you can use it with human torch which can get really big yeah. multiple man can can get absolutely insane with phoenix force yep. uh, and i feel like kind of like a, a combo style deck and and you, you know I, i've really like kind of doing a shuri deck that could also be a phoenix force deck uh has, has been a lot of fun for me but super cool card I, I feel like um even though like this maybe didn't hit the the power level uh, of being a card that's very very strong or maybe super popular at the the highest of ranks or uh, like higher higher level conquest uh i still think that this is a card that you, you know you can always go back on and building a, a phoenix force combo deck uh, is going to be a really really good time um and yep. You know, you already talked about Jean Grey and, and how much you, you like Jean Grey. Let's let's go in and talk to to talk about her a little bit, which was the uh, first card uh, to come out. Where is my Jean Grey? Oh, there she is. I have the I have the spotlight cash for of it. Very pretty. Um, so yeah, Jean Grey. I think it's interesting. I feel like a lot of people. This is a card a lot of people overrated, myself included. I thought that she was going to be an absolute. Kind of like a important like like very very strong card in the meta but but from playing it it seems like uh gene gray is more restrictive on yourself than you'd think and, and it can be a, a pretty pretty like like interesting balancing act of when you play gene gray you play a gene gray where they have less cards you play gene gray where like your side is almost full uh all these all these kind of different things so yeah tell me a little bit about uh you know uh, uh your your thoughts on just gene gray and how you've been using her well, I think, yeah, you're right. It's really hard to play her just right. Uh, and it takes like, uh, you know, it spends some amount on what your deck's trying to do and what their deck's trying to do. Uh, this design actually was originally on Nebula, I think, because we were trying to think of a design that was, Nebula is like part of the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, but like kind of not, right? She didn't, she shouldn't mm-hmm. start out as an enemy of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So we wanted her to like be played in Guardians decks, but not necessarily be uh, the same like line of text that all the other Guardians have. And this is like, this is like pretty good with the Guardians of the Galaxy, actually, right? Because mm-hmm. if you know they're going to be playing their cards there, man, Star Lord, Drax, they're looking better and better, right? And you can guarantee those uh, those hits. But uh, uh, we we ended up with a design we really really love for Nebula, and we really wanted a design that felt like the ultimate telepath, right? The mm-hmm. ultimate psychic, someone who can like really control your opponent to do exactly what to do. So I, I I think this is, this nails it. This is like a really uh, also it like leans right into my play style of like forcing my opponent to do things they don't want to do, clogging their lanes uh, earlier than they're hoping. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like playing this card with cards that like 
give me flexibility for later. So I think Jeff and maybe Landshark is really fun with this because you don't obviously you could play Jeff somewhere else. You don't have to mm -hmm. follow Gene Gray's advice, uh, yeah. and you could play Jeff there. So I'll start unlocking some other places to play, and then mm -hmm. move Jeff later and get in over the top of your opponent's early plays with uh, uh, something large later. So uh, like you know, Nightcrawler and those other move cards, I think are really fun with a card like this. Yeah, it's um, there, there's some really cool interactions with like if you have if you like move, let's say you play Jeff off of Green Je or, or Jean Grey, but then you want to play a big card at the end of the game, you can move baby uh, the yep. Jeff yep. into the lane, make it so that you can then play uh, Jean somewhere else, and you can do it in all these different ways. You can even like uh, play the card and then move Jeff away and keep the spot open. It's all depending on play order. It's it's really really. Um, you, you know, I think that it came out and, and there, there were, uh, some, some problems with it that got fixed pre uh, pretty, pretty yeah. early. Uh, Bummer. but, but after that, I mean, it seems like a, a nightmare of a card to code. And I, I think that, uh, you, you know, after that first initial hiccup, uh, it got, it seems like it's working, you, you know, near flawlessly at this point, uh, which is really, really cool. I mean, I, th I think that this card is, um, I'm happy it's not as strong as I thought it was going to be because I thought it was going to be frustratingly strong where you see it everywhere. And then it's like, oh, I want to do my own thing. What are you doing, Jean Grey? You, you like you're, you're <laughs> ruining my life. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's really well designed. I think it's in a good place where it, it's going to be found in in some really strong decks eventually. I feel like th this is a card that's just taken a really long time for people to figure out exactly the best way to use her. Uh, but, yep. but a cool, powerful, controlling effect uh, that doesn't seem overpowered and, and make you hate it when you're playing against it, which I think is the, yep. the best sweet spot to find. Yep. Uh, what kind of decks are you are you running, Gene Gray? Are are you doing like lockdown tile stuff, uh, guardian stuff, uh, like uh, anything? Yeah, like that? I, I, I gotta say, I like I'm really enjoying this Nebula deck that I've uh, been playing, uh, and uh, I I it's I, I, I'm, I'm kind of known for this. I like playing Green Goblin. I like playing cards that like block. I like Doctor Octopus that blocks my opponent's whole lane. So mm -hmm. like, anything that. Uh, limits my opponent's options late in the game but leaves me lots of options i love that i think that's super fun so uh you know those those kinds of decks where i'm you know, trying to you know get them to, to overcommit, and then i get to like perfectly you know win the locations i want to win i think she's great in those decks yeah super cool uh yeah really uh a card i was scared about but uh now kind of excited for it to, to see where she lands and and happy that yep. she seems to frustrate my opponents who play her just as much as me which is uh, I haven't, what i haven't there. tried yet is her and sandman have you tried her and sandman because that seems just awful well the, the problem with her and sandman i actually got this asked a million times the the first stream that i did her uh the the play order doesn't make sense right because it to get sandman and feel really good about it you usually want to ramp him on four uh, because yep, if you're yep. just going to play him on five wave is in general just a much better card to play on yeah, five right yeah uh so like to get to get gene out on three and then sam it on a four is impossible unless you get uh some some good luck with um uh, the Julie. the locations that'll hit so i don't, i think that gene wave was was probably where i found the the most uh, uh oh yeah like goodness where you, you know you play gene on uh, you play gene at some point you play wave on five and then you either slam the dr doom and the gene gray lane i was playing like claw in that deck too so uh so some other cool things that you, that you can really annoy and it definitely mm -hmm. definitely makes some people rage quit <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the dream that's the dream baby <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about the the, the next card, uh, which was the one that just got released this week. Uh, we yeah, Echo. Uh, so Echo, we finally have a counter to Cosmo. Uh, very yep. exciting. I love, 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 love her um, her animation where she just slaps like she just, yeah. just does the big handprint slap on the any ongoing cards that happen. Um, I think that the overall consensus. Uh, is that she is a interesting tech card that doesn't have a place really right now because it's not a, yep. a super ongoing focused meta uh, but it's a it's a nice card to to kind of have I, I think it, in my opinion I mean obviously uh, you know I'm not a card game designer uh, but in my opinion having all these different like tools that can rise up if certain decks become too powerful is is really really good for the overall kind of kind of complex balance of a game so what, what are your thoughts on echo and what she, what she brings to the table for the game overall well let me let me just uh, I, I agree with you what you just said actually and it's part of what we did when designing the original card pool for marvel snap was to give players uh like powerful options but tools to counter basically anything they could come up against pretty early on because it, it, like if you get beat by something you're like oh my i keep losing to destroyer or uh, uh, Odin or you know whatever it is Heimdall 
I want something. I'm just going to put in this card, and I will just start winning those matchups. I'll just win them every time. You know, screw mm. you, Iron Man. Enchantress is going in. Rogue is going in. Now I'm never going to lose to Iron Man ever again. And uh, even if you uh, don't put those cards in, if you lose again to Iron Man, you're like, well, I did choose not to put Enchantress in my deck. So... Mm -hmm. I guess that's on me, you know. It just like gives you it gives you the feeling of a lot more uh, uh, power or control over your own destiny, right? Knowing that mm. you could have put in this card and dealt with this thing, that gives you that uh, just like it helps. It helps with it. If you if you're like, there's nothing I could have done about it. I could not play any deck that would destroy this deck. I don't even know what to do. Like I think that's that's not that's not as good i think it's um uh, a little bit dangerous actually. you feel helpless uh, right like it, yeah. it, it's stuck uh, and we've i mean I, th I definitely think there's been a couple of times in the marvel slam but I, I think that the balancing of this game is really good how fast and lean you guys are with things uh but i feel like there has been a couple of times where like you know like pre-nerf zabu got a little suffocating you, you know at one point like sure he felt a little suffocating where yeah right yeah. felt like if they get a perfect answer what, what you know what are you going to do and uh, I do feel like the team has, has worked to uh, to address those problems, and uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense just coming from you and, and kind of hearing that, that that you don't feeling helpless in a card game is the reason why you like put it down and you're like oh, I don't want yeah it. right like, oh, exactly that, I hated that you know and and like uh, a good uh, tech call can be like the difference between a great player and a good player right like if you're you know I'm feeling like there's lots of shuri going on uh, you know I'm gonna play this you know I'm gonna play Shang Chi or whatever and and like just you know, end it. Uh, obviously, it didn't work against Taskmaster when Taskmaster worked differently. But you know, there was there is like if you feel like you are starting to sense what's happening in the meta, and mm -hmm. you can get one step ahead of it, then that's like you know potentially a lot more wins, a lot more cubes, and then you could be you know one of the one of the best players in the world, right? Like, feel like a genius. You, 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 yeah, you read the meta, and you're like, I knew it. I knew this was coming. Uh, and so having the tools to let smart players who are reading the meta you know make make those uh those calls i think is is also really helpful yeah yeah i yeah i i definitely agree with that yeah be, oh man dude when you when you feel like you just like kind of get get out ahead and, and get and find something that no one else is playing that just works oh man chef's kiss dude it's <laughs> it's good stuff it's good stuff right there um so uh any, any other uh, thoughts on echo or, or like have you used her at all i know i know that it's been uh, very recent for for her coming no out. I, I haven't i haven't played echo at all yet uh i just i just picked her up in a uh spotlight cash uh and uh it's it's uh yeah it's the kind of thing where i think i either i would have to feel like i'm like reading the meta and it's like mm -hmm. it's iron man city out there and i'm you know I'm, i've got the answer uh, or uh, I'm trying to like there is a there is like a thing that I'm like Cosmo just ruins me mm -hmm. and uh, I need to to leave leave my Cosmo options open so you know I'm gonna play with some kind of one drop and she's she's the one that's gonna protect my uh, my game plan the best uh, I think I'd, I'd throw her in and even if it wasn't like everywhere but I just like it's like a just a death blow to my deck. To, <laughs> to see Cosmo drop, you know, the wrong location. I think that's a, if I was playing that kind of deck, I'd consider her as a one drop for that deck. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, let me see if I can pull open the, the the Shroud of Legion here. Okay, they're not they're not in yet. But uh, so I don't have the other two, but uh, there are two more coming out this month. Uh, one of which I, I think is gonna be kind of whatever, but, but a lot of fun. And one of which I think is like a sleeper, sleeper, crazy card. Uh, but we'll, start, we'll talk first about about Legion. So Legion, uh, if you guys don't know, I can't wait chat, to hear which tier, which one is which, because uh, I think it could go either way, actually. <laughs> so Legion, Legion, if you guys don't know it, Jen, it's a five energy eight power, and it says uh, copy this location to the other two locations. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's that's the exact vernacular. But um, essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to you, you know on turn five or turn four if you ramp it, you, you turn one location into the other two. Uh, I think Legion gonna be bad uh i don't really see him uh showing up in any like really big competitive areas uh but i'm interested to see i mean obviously you've probably been able to touch your card have the have your hands on the card has anything surprised you about legion that, that you've yes. seen or do you think that there's things that people are, are not expecting about legion that that's going to be uh, really cool uh legion is so fun i um i think this card was designed by brad i can't remember for sure mm -hmm. um but uh this was like one of the, i think one of his first cards he designed like actually years ago so i 
I've been playing with Legion for three years or something, I think. So yeah, I've had, I've had a lot of experiences of getting blown out by Legion and uh, blowing other people out with Legion. He used to be like a 5-2 or something when we were playing with him. Right? So it was like not, it was not very powerful. And then like the team, like right before we get packaged this thing up was like, hey, hey, what about 5-8? And I was like, oh my, okay, you know, let's go. So, uh, you know, maybe it's my experience of playing with him at 5-2 for so long. I'm gonna see him at 5-8. I'm like, oh my, this is gonna be, this is gonna be something. Uh, and uh, I, I gotta tell you, uh, the first time you're playing a game of Marvel Snap and you're like, I'm crushing this fool. And then he, they play <laughs> Legion to bar with no name. You're gonna be like, wow. Oh man, I got, dude. I got played, I got played. It's <laughs> Oh, oh God! <laughs> it's, it doesn't happen that often, but man, it's a story. Uh, he's really interesting. I mean, there's like uh, he's like one of the hardest cards to determine if he's good or not because it's so contextual, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, you can build around him in some ways, right? You could like try and storm into Legion, um, but like he's he's in some ways uh, like Rhino. Right. Mm -hmm. If you have a location you don't like, he, he he can get rid of it for you. Right. He can just clear out all the bad locations, no problem. Sure. Right. Or if you're ahead and one of the locations is like a really problematic, you can't play here location. Hey, what? Guess what? No, no one gets to play any more cards. That's the end of the game. You know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. He, yeah, he can just do that sometimes. So like you know, it's kind of like um, uh, uh you know, Scarlet Witch or something, right? Like, is she good? I don't know. It depends on what locations are out there, right? Like, sometimes she's really good. It's sometimes mm -hmm. she's not that good, you know? And, and Legion is in that in that space. Sometimes he's ridiculous. Sometimes he's like, you know, a 5'8". But it's not, honestly, 5'8 is not like the worst possible thing that you could be doing. So, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, excited. Feels okay. I'm excited about Legion. I'm playing him. I'll, I'll I'll play him too. Don't get me wrong. I I I'm more looking at it from like a competitive. Angle. I mean, I'll I'll play any ridiculous card just to you know. I, I need I need my YouTube shorts, man. Uh, but um, so uh, a couple things about Legion. One thing I, I don't know if you know this interaction or not, but a lot of people have wondered about the storm interaction because there there is. Yep. Um, you know, storm. If it hits mirror dimension afterwards, the, that that yes. storing location goes an entire extra turn. Right. So uh, I've been I've wondered. So if you storm on four and you play legion on five on that storming location, will it shut down all three lanes on turn six? I think or will so. The, other two it, be the timing of mirror dimension is different than the timing it's different, of yeah. uh, uh, the on reveal. I I I have to check it again. I, it's been so long since I played legion. Uh, uh, it's been like like at least a year since I played him, so <laughs> I have no idea. I think it works differently than with Mirror Dimension, though. Okay, it's interesting. Not, it's also not clear to me that Mirror Dimension is working like the very best it could work. So, uh, yeah, yeah. There's all these like weird little things where like you know the start of the turn, the end of a turn. You know, like I feel like there's all these kind of like little steps, and uh, I think yeah. Glenn has talked about it a little bit about how everything resolves and then priorities done, and uh, all these kind of like little touch points to to kind of like figure out exactly how these things would work. But uh, what just an absolute baller Glenn is, by the way. Holy oh cow. my gosh, it dude. Is I, just, I, uh, oh, I'm, so I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. Yeah. And then I didn't even he know is. he was like the head designer for the Lord of the Rings, like Magic the Gathering set that just came out. And it's like, what, what, the, what does this guy do? What does this guy sleep, man? He's on Twitter 24 <laughs> seven answering, answering everyone's crazy questions uh, about, about Marvel Snap, man. Yeah. What, what, a, what, a, what an amazing, uh, amazing person to, uh, to, to, to join the team for y'all. He's yeah. like, I don't know, man. His his communication has been invaluable to to me, plenty of content creators, and then just you know the community as a whole. Uh, and I think that um, uh, yeah, it's it's special. I, I I think that that's so so rare in gaming to you, you know have someone who's who's there changing uh, ch making the changes to the cards, like finalizing, uh, you know, being open and and talking to people and, and hearing uh, people out, and then you, you know making yep. these decisions and being and being uh, having really great contextual understanding of, of why these decisions are made uh it's it's super super cool uh i he was the lead right was he the lead of that one or i know he was part of the development i, I want to misspeak yeah I, uh, I he was definitely one of the guy, the top guys on that set for sure. yeah it's super cool super super cool um and then yeah i, I mean i think with legion it, it's just going to depend you know I, I guess as people play with them uh what percentage of games by turn five 
is there going to be a big impactful thing that you can do because i feel like what we've seen is that you know those big chonky cards that you're playing on turn five unless you're getting an, an insane amount of power output from them uh, it's kind of hard to to justify a, a deck spot if it's not you know really being a, a game-changing card so i'm excited to see i mean i, I i'm gonna mess around yeah, with Legion a lot we'll have to find out we'll have to find out i'm optimistic i'm optimistic yeah. um Okay, one thing that, okay, and this is one thing I have a little bit of a bone to pick with you, and it's kind of uh -oh. leading up into Mirage, but it's probably not your fault at all, but I'm going to blame it on you anyway, because it's funny. Uh, now, you, uh, we talked last time we were here about Maria Hill and my love for Maria Hill, and I don't know if you know this, but I do have the Maria Hill cheeseburger now. I will show it off because she's so amazing with her cheeseburger. Uh, you guys went and nerfed the card? You nerfed the card by, by making it less consistent? What is going on here? I was the only one playing Maria Hill from here to the sun. And then you, then, then you give your, your your change to Maria Hill where you start adding a two cost card, ruining her in Surfer. Explain yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, look, I, I immediately afterwards, <laughs> after we talked, I went and, and uh, then typed in a new number. And I was like, well, this will screw you, Binks. That's, that was, that, that's how it went down. Everyone, the whole team was like, no, Ben, don't. And I was like, no, it must be done. Nah. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I think it's. I mean, I, I think it does like lead her into to what she does. But man, I, I do miss her adding just a one cost card. But this brings me to the card, which I think is a card that everyone is underrating and is going to be an insane card that I'm going to want to put in every single deck, which is Ooh. Mirage. So yep. Mirage is the final card this month. Um, Mirage is a two energy, two power. If people don't know in chat, uh, who takes a copy of your opponent's lowest card adds it to your hand and gives it plus two power. So a little bit understated at two, two, but you're getting two extra power in the card that you're copying. And you're getting not only a small card in your opponent's hand, which is going to be the card that you're most likely going to be able to fit in and play because it's uh, the lower cost card can, can fit into curve easier, but it's a card that your it's not a random card like Maria Hill is. It's a card your opponent chose to put in their deck, which is in general going to be a much better card so i think that mirage is just one of these superstar cards that gives you information it gives you a good valuable resource it's easy to play early and it's not super bad uh, from from a stats perspective at a 2-2 two -two, it's definitely under where you want to be but i am through the moon excited for this card and i am going to be pretty much i i i i don't know if you know the meme where it's like uh best friend french friendship ended with this person like this person's new best friend now that's how i feel with with maria hill and, and mirage because i think that mirage <laughs> I'm, I'm putting in like every single deck so what do you think about mirage if, if, from what you've played with her and and your expectations uh, of, of her coming to the game uh well i'm also excited uh i think it's super it, like you know how important is it to to get information about what your opponent's game plan is mm -hmm. uh, very important right like it really potentially you're going to play really differently against a certain kind of deck than against another kind of deck, right? Mm -hmm. You might uh, hold on to uh, certain kinds of answers like, you know, uh, Cosmo or, uh, you know, Enchantress, depending on, or you might even need to just play something on curve, right? And if you know a little bit more, you can make a better decision. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, this is like the earliest, you know, especially if they don't play a card on turn one or whatever, you you can like, this is, this is the earliest you could potentially find out about uh, like what their strat is and that could win you that could be everything right that could win the, the whole game for you uh, it's interesting it's actually less powerful in conquest over the course of the game because you actually probably do know what they're playing in games two three four and so on uh, uh for this one reason right because it it it, tell, it does tell you like you know what what they have in their hand which is also mm -hmm. valuable but uh it's uh, but you don't you don't need to find out early what deck they're in. It's still very powerful on, on game one of Conquest, but it's really yeah. good on the ladder, where you have no idea until maybe it's too late. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. So so you're looking at it from you, you know early on in Conquest, game one, maybe even game two, it can be really valuable in Conquest. But if you get to game five and six, you kind of know what what you're expecting so far. So it loses value. I I still think that in Conquest, it, I mean things like. Um, especially things like Pig, which goes for like the, or, or Spider Ham that goes for the highest cost card that they might yep. not be playing, if especially if there's retreats yep. earlier, can be a, a bit more of a conquest tool than something yep. like Mirage. But but I, I definitely think that there's uh, pluses and minuses between Ladder and Conquest about getting that information. Yeah, and, and to be clear, I think uh, it just doesn't provide the value of getting to find out what deck your opponent's playing. Mm. It might still be enough value 
to be mm. very good in conquest, but it just uh, uh, it's even better. Whatever that value is, it's even better in game one in conquest or on the ladder because you're also getting some information about what your opponent's doing, which is which is which is some real value. Yeah, and those cards that give you information that you can play early, I think, are are even like especially more valuable. You know, like Spider Spider Ham on one, or you know, playing this on two, uh, as opposed to like something like White Queen, which can be really good for for looking towards the late stages. But um, you know, getting that early so that you know what to expect and what your opponent's going to be building towards, and you know, kind of what in your mind, like, oh, if they're not playing this card, it's definitely in their deck, so that means that it's not in their hand on this turn. Yep, uh, yep. These different things can can kind of, like, like really expand with what you want. Um, but I, I think Mirage is going to be everywhere, man. I'm really excited for, like, kind of, like, to it to go in just kind of, like, a really collector-focused deck. Uh, there's, there's some cool, like, collector decks they're like uh throw a bunch of cards in your hand but like don't even run like devil dinosaur because they're they're just trying to be like really low low cost oh, and yeah. fast um so i think that it easily fits right into there um mm -hmm. so uh yeah really excited and just the fact that it gives the card plus two um the the reason i think that is so good is because if you're squeezing that in on like turn six you know and and they don't know like if you have like a one five zero or like a one seven titania in your hand like yeah, right. how are yeah, they gonna exactly. play around you slamming down a one seven titania on the on the final turn you know could go anywhere it could, it could be could be super crazy um but awesome man yeah I, I i'm really excited i think that this month is is really cool uh i know that uh you, you know it hasn't been fully uh announced yet but from from uh, what i've seen about next month i think it's gonna be really cool too uh, I'm just I'm just so excited about uh, the the game where it's at right now. Um, are you ready to jump in and, and get some gameplay going? Oh, let's do it! Let's, let's do it! Do I'm looking it. forward to it.